In this episode, uh, part two of a three three part mini series, we're going to look at how to improve the quality of some really quite nasty code. I'm going to look at using the techniques of reducing complexity and composing methods and applying those to the, to our to our unpleasant code base uh, to make it a nicer place to work. Hi, I'm Dave Farley from Continuous Delivery. Uh, welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Uh, and if you like the video, pre please press like at the end. Um, in this episode, uh, we're going to follow on from a previous exploration of working with legacy code. Uh, in that e earlier episode, we explored some techniques uh, for working in a, a pre-existing body of code that you're not happy with. If you remember, I deliberately chose some very nasty code and started trying to improve it. We, we talked about approval testing and removing clutter from the code base. So if you haven't already seen that episode, take a look uh, and that is good preparatory work for the stuff we're going to cover today. In this uh, episode, we're going to explore uh, the next two steps in my four step approach, reducing complexity, and composing methods. There's going to be uh, one more e episode in this mini-series uh, about trying to pull the threads together, talking about refactoring to testability. I'm also going to make uh, the whole exercise of refactoring this nasty code uh, available uh, uh, online somewhere, and uh, I'll put a link when that's available. For now, though, let's get back to the code. So, the next thing after we've removed clutter is to start reducing the, uh, the complexity of the code. Try and reduce the cyclomatic complexity. And what that means is, is the branchiness. So, so if the, the cyclomatic com complexity is a measure of the complexity of the code, which is based on the number of different paths through the code. And you can kind of see that just by looking at that uh, code, certainly in C family languages like Java, C sharp, uh, in, in the level of indentation. So there's, there's, there's stuff going on here. There's, we've got a for loop here. Uh, and then if ifs and else's within it. So there's quite a lot going on. So m one of my favorite refactoring tools in this context is, is to extract a method. What that allows us to do is that it allows us to apply a name to a block of code. So my technique for doing this in terms of, in terms of reducing the complexity of the code at this stage is to start walking through and seeing if I can figure out what blocks of the code can do. And what I'm really looking for is that blocks are related. There's a great, I'm paraphrasing, but there's a great quote from Kent Beck that I really love, which is, all of, des all of good design is really about moving bits of code that are related closer together and bits of code that are unrelated further apart. And that's what I'm trying to do. So let's start on that. Um, this has children thing has been bothering me, as you've seen. So the first thing is, is we could do something really simple. So we could say, so if has children is true, then the has children Boolean value is true. So we can get rid of the if condition. So if I can just replace that. There we go. So that's uh, that's simplified things a little bit already, um, and if I'm doing that, really, so has children? Where is has children used? So I can look at the places where that's used, and it's only used in one place, which is there, which means that I can inline that method, and I can get rid of the variable, which is what I've just done. So my refactoring tools have done that for me. So the has children thing has gone away. That's reduced a little bit of clutter. So now we're into the we're into the parsing the parsing bit. So what we've got here is we've got some kind of prep work. So what's this stuff doing? We've got if we're setting up we're setting up the um, the document 
in order to be able to start searching it by the look of it to me. So we're tr what we're trying to get to is that we're trying to get hold of a node against which we can start iterating, um, a node that represents the document against which we can start iterating and parsing the elements element by element. That's what that looks like it's doing to me. So I think that all this, all of this is really about getting the node. So let's name that block get node. Okay, so that's simplified things. And then this bit is about processing elements. So we, what we can do, I'm going to use another useful refactoring tool in here. I'm just going to start highlighting something with control W and keep pressing control W. This is in, I'm using IntelliJ idea, which is my favorite refactoring idea. And we're going to keep pressing control W to grab all of the inside of that for loop. So if we go down and look, it's got all of the for loop. Using the tool means that I'm less likely to make a mistake. Uh, if, if I do it by hand, I'm, I, I might make a mistake. So now I'm going to do the hotkey uh, which is um, Command Alt M on my keyboard to create a new method, and this method we're going to say process elements. I think that's process element. So we're iterating over the elements. Says element. Okay. So the get JSON method has gone from I don't know. 100 and odd lines of fairly ugly code to something now that looks a bit a bit more pleasant. Now one thing that I should say is is you might not you might not decide you might decide not to take this far enough to get to beautiful code. You might decide to stop at any point. If I'm doing a good job, if every time I've made a a step, and I'll, I will remember to do this now. I'm going to run my tests, check that everything's good. Um, and it didn't. Ooh, interesting. So I've, I've, uh, I've, I've broken something. What have I done? So let's undo that change very quickly. And run the test again. The test passed. Okay, interesting. Ah, I think I can see what's going on. So we've got all these nasty breaks and continues and things. Yeah, uh, okay. So let's try that again. Let me, let me just do what I said I wouldn't do, which is do it myself. Now this is an important point because what I'm doing, what, I've made a mistake. I've, I've, I've taken a step forward. I've evaluated my progress, making that step forward, and uh, I, I failed. I got it wrong. So let's uh, process element. Try that. Let's run that again, and it's passed this time. Okay. So I think. A continue here is not doing anything, so let me just make that change and see that. Yeah, so right, so now we're in a stable place. So back to where I was, talking about this piece of code. Um, it's quite possible that you might decide not to take this far enough to get to a beautiful, elegant outcome. At any point, I've just run the test, so I would have saved this to my version control system. I'm now stable. The code is now in a better place than it was before. It's now more workable than it is. It's now easier to understand than it was. It's now more more modular than it was. Now there's a there's a long way to go in this code. We could make we can we could get it to a much much better place, and, and we're going to continue working on it. But if we decided to stop now, the code would still be in a better place, even if this is all we did. And so one of the keys to refactoring is this ability to stop at any point. 
uh, to be able to make its incremental progress in the quality in, in the quality of the code base that we're working on. And I would recommend to you to always adopt that kind of discipline and to always be working, you know, adopt the Boy Scout rule. Every single time you go into the code base, you want to leave it in a slightly better state than it was than when you when you entered. And always look for these kinds of little tidy ups. Always be just improving them. And certainly if you're using a, a powerful React refactoring IDE like the, the JetBrains family tool, I'm not sponsored by JetBrains, by the way. I'm, I just like their tools. Uh, if you've got great, great modern IDEs to support you, it, it makes these kinds of changes much, much safer. The two, you don't need anything terribly sophisticated in many ways, but, but the, the better the, the IDE, uh, refactoring support, uh, the, 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 the further that you can go. The two key refactorings that I use all of the time, more than anything else, are rename and extract method. I, I use many of the others, uh, but those uh, I use often enough that I just know how to do those uh, from the keyboard without thinking about it. So looking at this code, this code is not very light. nice. I don't like it very much. There's lots of things I I don't like the fact that we are we are creating or getting hold of the document here. Why don't we just pass in the document from the outside? But my job here is not to make this code perfect. It's to make it a place where I can work. So in this case, if I were to add, if I were to do what I'd prefer to do is that I'd like to inject that document to separate the concerns uh, of this method. Um, but if I were to do that, it changes the public method. I could do something a little bit cheaty. I could do this. Get JSON. So I could do this, and now I've got a method. And if I was to trying to encourage people to use this version rather than the other, I could make this method public. And now there's an alternative, and I could deprecate this one or something like that. To or one, you know, I, I could do all sorts of things that would allow me to. Um, to, to, to just start working in, in, in a nicer area. So I, 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 I'm going to stick with this for now. This is, this is slightly nicer. We've got better, better separation of concerns. This, I've, I've isolated this piece of ugliness um, to this method. And now this method, from now on, this, this is where I'm working. And this is a, you know, a little bit more pleasant in general. And now I've got my my, uh, my starting point for the string that I'm trying to build. I've got a node, and then I'm processing the element, uh, the elements, in order to build this up. Um, I could just go one step further, and maybe close JSON. Right, so that method just tidies up and kind of isolates that little bit of that little bit of parsing. So I'm sorry, but I forgot to mention during the commentary uh, while I was actually doing the refactoring an important point, and that is really step three in my approach to refactoring. So first step is to remove the clutter so that you can just see the code better. Second step is to reduce the cyclomatic complexity by starting to pull out methods and name blocks of code and just bring the things that are closely related closer together and separate the things that are more unrelated. Step three is to compose the methods. And that is to try and get the methods to tell their own story. We want to organize our code in a way and using labels and names that describe what it's trying to do. So now for the get JSON for doc method, what we have is that we, it's fairly obvious what's going on. There are three, essentially three elements to this method. The start, we're trying to get the node that we want to parse. Then we're going to iterate over uh, the elements and process each element in turn. And then at the end, we're going to, to finish by closing the JSON string so that it's a complete block of JSON code. That's telling the story for this method. It makes that method dramatically more readable than it was when we started. 
And this is an important point. This is the compose method step in, in refactoring and is an important one. In summary, this is the real meat of the refactoring. Um, we've looked at two simple techniques, uh, really, to, 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 to achieve both of these ends. Uh, rename refactoring and extract method refactoring. These are straightforward. These are widely available in our tools. And just these two can form a strong basis for making safe, effective changes to existing code. If you focus your efforts on um, reducing the complexity um, and then uh, composing methods in the way that we've just seen, then this gives you a much stronger uh, discipline to, to address your code and start getting it into more workable shape. We've, by focusing on reducing complexity, uh, we've made the code dramatically easier to understand. And by taking the time to compose the methods, uh, it now to each method now tells its own story, and so for future in future it's going to be much easier to come into this code and understand what it's doing. The next step in the next episode, we're going to be looking at taking this one step further and getting to a testable outcome. Really, just taking these same principles and adopting them more widely in the code base, and still we, until we start to see. Some, some, some nice testable pieces of code that we can start carving out and testing more thoroughly. Uh, I will make the full unedited exercise of refactoring the code uh, available if you, if you would like to see the whole process. Um, and really that just goes into applying these same four techniques over and over to more and more of the code. And the composition of the methods uh, 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 and the reduction in complexity is just taken deeper into the code. Next time we're going to take the, uh, the final step of refactoring all the way to testable code. So if you don't want to miss that episode, please hit subscribe and, and we'll keep you in and hit the bell notification icon and we'll keep you informed of all future episodes. Thank you very much for watching.